Welcome back. I'm Brandon, the HBAR Bull, and I do some work for the HBAR Foundation. Today, we welcome Bobby Stearman, the founder of the developer education YouTube channel, Did Coding. Welcome, Bobby. Hey, how you doing? Great to meet you. But yeah, nice to meet you. I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Yeah, likewise. All right, Bobby. So to start it off, can you just tell us a bit about yourself and what you've been doing with Did Coding up until this point? Okay, so uh, yeah, so I started decoding uh, a couple of years ago um, because I had a kind of a potted history getting to the point where I would call myself a um, full stack developer. I was always the go-to guy in the companies I've worked for to, with anything in regards to tech. I, I kind of uh, was a natural duck to water, so to speak, when it comes to coding and VPA. Um, and decided to really kind of focus on uh, coding and learning to code five, six, seven years ago. Um, and I focused on Python. And I remember I self-taught and I remember following numerous videos and tutorials and blogs and articles, uh, trying to figure out how to do the smallest of things. So uh, when I really got to grips with it and started building my own applications, um, I felt that I wanted to give something back. So I started decoding and decoding was all about creating easy to follow tutorials for people such as me. In fact, the DID of did coding stands for dumb it down. Uh, so I try to create content tutorials centered around Python and Django initially. And um, I tried to kind of demystify the whole world of coding so that people like myself, when I was five, six, seven years ago, trying to pick things up can watch my content and um, hopefully get up to speed a lot quicker than I did. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. I've been doing education in the space for a while, not with the coding side of it, just general knowledge about Hedera and the ecosystem. But yeah. we really need people like you who, who make it easy for developers to switch over and start building on Hedera. Yeah, I certainly try to. So what exactly are you doing with support from the HBAR Foundation? Okay, so easy one to answer, really. I mean, if you look at any one of my videos, I always say that any support is much appreciated because it helps me create content quicker and of a better quality. Mm -hmm. So I started making Hedera videos almost nine months ago, fell in love with the technology, and it seemed fitting for me to then apply for a grant through the HBAR Foundation to support the creation of Hedera-centric type content. And that's what I will be doing with the grant. It um, is, I can set aside an amount of time every week to focus specifically on content around Hedera, whether it be jargon busters, whether it be uh, developer tutorials or, or, or the building of digital applications. So that's what I'll be uh, I'll be using the uh, grant for. I got you. So, I mean, you said that you, you got involved with Hedera a while ago. I'm sure it's been a learning process. How has it been learning to integrate with Hedera? Surprisingly easy, actually. Um, I specialize in uh, APIs. Um, I get a buzz of being able to connect an application to a third party application. So I'm, I'm very much familiar with working with uh, APIs across the board. So when I come across uh, Hedera and um, I, it didn't take very long to get to grips with um, the APIs and the integration of Hedera into a digital application, it was it was relatively easy. Um, but and, and like I say, I fell in love with the technology before I actually started uh, doing the deep dive. So um, maybe that kind of um, changed my perspective a little bit. But I, I had the desire to keep digging and digging and digging. Sure, sure. Uh, has there been any surprises along the way? Uh, the only surprise was that it was was easy. I mean, I was able to keep in mind that there is actually no Python SDK. I'm a Python developer. I, okay. I tinker with other languages as well, but I'm more or less a, a Python developer. So there's no Python SDK. So integrating Hedera, that's currently as of today's day. So integrating Hedera technology into a Python application, you'd expect it to be quite difficult um, mm -hmm. because there's no software developer kit. However, there is a um, there is a package that you can use that kind of wraps up the Java SDK. It was surprisingly easy to get off the ground. It really, really was. Okay. Um, I didn't, I, I was kind of a, a mechanic without all of my tools, but I still managed to do it. And as soon as I fit, figured it out, created my first video and I was hooked. I gotcha. I gotcha. So has the learning process motivated you to build anything in particular on the network? Yeah, it has. I mean, one or two of the videos, um, I, I focus on some of the tutorials that are actually on the Hedera documentation, but I've also created other videos where I've built a, an e-commerce 
application that allows you to transfer HBAR, which is their native currency, mm-hmm. uh, in exchange for goods and services. So it's kind of a, a kind of a hobby project that I was tinkering with. I mean, yeah. it's not something, it's not really a, a, a real world application. But above and beyond that, I am currently working on an NFT project that we're hoping to launch in the uh, coming months. Um, previous videos I've, I've put out there where I've uh, done a tutorial on how to create artwork for NFT projects. Okay. So I'm taking all of my knowledge that I've kind of gained over the last nine months and, and trying to make a an actual real world application from that. Well, we have a, a thriving NFT ecosystem already in the Hedera space, and there's so much infrastructure, marketplaces, and things like that. I think you're, whatever you're building is going to be uh, be able to leverage that uh, infrastructure and be successful. I do hope so. I do hope so. And there's also nothing wrong with, uh, you know, tinkering and having some of these hobbies because sometimes those can turn into the, the most thriving businesses. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the, some of my most successful applications have been from just coming up with a little idea over a drink with some friends. That's right. That's right. So uh, can you just run us through the content, the Hedera content that you've produced so far and maybe some of the stuff you have in the works? Yeah, sure. So I touched on this a moment ago. So some of the videos I created, uh, I haven't done anything new for a few months now, but some of the videos I created centered around the documentation on the Hedera website. So there's one thing having written documentation on a website, which can be easy to follow. But sometimes I found, especially when I was learning that um, somebody creating a video and doing a hand holding type tutorial, walking through um newbies if you like um through those stages i felt was quite a useful thing to do so i created i think five or six videos that walk through each step so it's creating an account mm-hmm. uh creating an, a, a local environment um syncing between the, the different networks and what have you so i've done those videos i've touched on this also about the application of creating an e-commerce app that transfers hbar into uh, goods and services um NFT artwork, so not so much focused on uh, Hedera, but certainly in the same space. Okay. Um, in terms of what's in the pipeline, so uh, I actually recorded a video just yesterday where I built a Hedera SDK mm-hmm. that allows uh, or enables the, the use of the Hedera mirror node. So it's a very, very easy REST API that they've got on their website, but there's no SDK for it. So I wrote the SDK documenting my steps and created a tutorial. So anyone who wants to build a Python SDK for an API project can watch my video and hopefully get off the ground very, very quickly. But that's a very, very much a Hedera focused uh, video. Oh, good stuff. I mean, uh, the developers, I'm sure, are going to appreciate it. I certainly, no matter what I'm doing, if I'm fixing a, fixing a washing machine or, or learning something in the uh, investing space, I think that the easiest thing to do is certainly go on YouTube. Those step-by-step tutorials are the way to go. Yeah, that's right. And in some videos, especially the developer series that I'm now putting together, will always be a video plus a walkthrough tutorial on my website. So where I, I, I write the, the content and follow it through step by step. So if it, even if somebody wants to just doesn't learn necessarily as well via a video than what they do if they're reading content directly, I get it on the screen. I walk those guys through it as well. So I try, I try to tick all the boxes. Yeah, yeah. So um, have you gotten any interesting questions from developers so far? And I've, I've probably put 10 videos out that are kind of um, uh, sort of Hedera focused. And I have got some, got good feedback, but the feedback is more, uh, I guess, I've um, encouraged some developers to go, do you know what, I can actually code with um, on the Hedera network. Uh, so they've come up with an idea and it's enabled them to take it from just a concept or an idea through to, you know, MVP stage. So I've had uh, a few developers approach me directly from the or because of the videos I put out on YouTube to say, thank you very much. There was a bit of a, a, a gap in my knowledge of how to get moving using Python and Hedera. You filled that gap. Thank you very much. But in terms of questions specific, I don't think I've put enough videos out there to get them really kind of key questions to get my uh, get me thinking. Well, I think that indicates that you're probably doing a pretty good job. If they're just saying thank you, it means you, they pretty much learned what they needed uh, from the video. So I think you're doing a good job. Yeah, no, thank you. And, and across all of my videos, I've had 99% of the feedback has been outstanding. It really has. Good. And that makes it all worthwhile, I think. You know, yeah. like I, said, I started decoding to give back. And uh, if I started getting some pretty negative uh, feedback, I probably would have given up a long time ago. But I'm, I'm hooked. I'm still here. 
Sure. Sounds like you're on the right track. So I'm going to show a quick clip of one of your videos here so people know what you're putting out. Uh, and then we'll go into some final thoughts. Great stuff. Hey everyone and welcome to this Hedera Python playlist that I've been putting together and in this video we'll be doing some pretty cool stuff with HBAR like transferring it from one account to another account. Uh, when this does fire up it will take a couple of seconds because although um, I think reaching finality and consensus only takes about five seconds it's very very quick in, in, in a grand scheme of things. What this is doing is doing much more than just a, a simple transfer. It's creating accounts, it's um, configuring clients and things like that. So it would take about five to 10 seconds to work. So what we'll do is we will call manage transfer and we will say amount equals two. And then we'll say description equals test and then we were what do we call it was it create oh no it's make transfer will it work will it work first time that's the important thing i'm nervous Hey, there we go. That's fantastic. I'm happy with that. Um, it should have worked first time because I was playing around with it earlier and it worked lovely in the other, uh, other project. So the transaction was a success. Transaction ID, gobbledygook, but that's the idea of the transaction. The customer HBAR balance went down from 100. Remember we sent it, uh, set it to, um, what was it? 100 million, I forget what it was, but we, we um, passed through, let's have a look. We passed through in the get accounts um, 10 billion. So 10 billion H bars, like I said, it was 100 H bar. So we, we would expect that. So the balance was 100 and it's now 97.9999444674 H bar, right? So we transferred, what did I call two? So we transferred two, which you'd expect that to be uh, 98. And then obviously there's a fee that's been deducted as well. The customer transaction fee was two point. Ah, oh, right. Okay. So it was. Um, so it shows you the entire. That's that's what it is. I'll I'll have to actually that's my rudimental sum. So what I actually need to do is um, the result minus the actual H bar transaction itself. So the fee was 0.005532 tiny bars. So that's my mistake, but I'll change that when I put it on GitHub. And then our balance, which is the most important part, went up from 8197 to 8199. So it went up by two H bar. Customers went down by two plus a fee. Ours went up by two without a fee. Perfect. We've done exactly what we set out to do. It has taken nearly 30 minutes to create this video. Sorry it's taken a little bit longer than, than normal, but there was quite a lot of code to do. All right, Bobby, that was some good stuff. Um, do you have any final thoughts before we let you go? Well, only that, um, I mean, I'm over the moon that I've got this grant. It really does enable me to now focus on Hedera type content, which is fantastic. And like I said earlier on in this, um, this, this conversation, I've fallen in love with a project. So uh, this grant has given me the opportunity to actually have an active part in the project and increasing exposure and getting as many developers looking at the Hedera network as humanly possible. So yeah, like I said, this, this grant has enabled me to have that, um, you know, get me involved in a project at that level. But uh, if anyone who's watching this wants to reach out and contact me about anything about the content, about anything, in regards to Hedera, my email is bobby at didcoding.com. That's bobby at didcoding.com. And my Twitter is at didcoding. Perfect, perfect. Well, Bobby, thank you so much for giving us some time today. Uh, and we're happy to have you in the ecosystem. Thank you very much. Great to meet you.